Hi there folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. We're back out here on the 1973 Larson boat. The boat is junk. The uh, the transom, if you, <laughs> it's funny to look at it because the engine's kind of angled down and the stuff on the back's angled up a little bit, but it's just opposite of what it should be right now because somebody has taken the front motor mount out of it and because it was basically rot, it was not basically, it was rotted away. And I think, I'm glad the guy never got this in the water because I think he'd have been in for a rude awakening when he went to throttle it real hard or turn real hard and it just ripped the back of the boat out because the whole transom's just, it's rotted. The wood's rotted uh, down all the way to the floor. It's terrible. The stringers are gone. There's no structural integrity left in this old beast here. So today in this video, last video we got it running. Doesn't run well, but the engine's tight and quiet. That's the important part, other than the rattly valve cover, which we'll have that fixed before we uh, button things up. I want to get it running well, then I want to adjust the valves while it's running. And then I'll put a new gasket and a new cover on it, and then we'll listen to it run really well. It'll By the time we're done at the next video, or this video, it should be idling. Uh, we're going to do some wire repair. I bought a, a big wire crimper, so I can crimp up some new connectors for my battery. And... We're gonna take some wiring apart, wire wheel it, clean it up so it makes good connections. We were having a little starter issues and I think the starter seems to turn over really really well. I think it's just bad connections. I'm not getting enough juice through it. And uh, once it arcs a couple of times, it re makes a connection for a little bit of moment in time. But before I wreck the starter, we're gonna fix that as well. Uh, what are the other things we're gonna do here? I gotta plug up a couple of water leak holes over here, which these are holes, these are pipe plugs that are on the side of the block and the un underside of the manifold uh, that were leaking water last go round, but not leaking, they weren't there. They're pumping water out on the end of the boat. Um, what else we got? We're gonna cover that, oh, timing. We're gonna get into timing, show you how I set the timing. Uh, if you watched the last video, you saw how I got it close and kind of dialed in a little bit and then we'll do the precision timing now with the light and we'll get that set up so it runs good. Uh, Carburetor needs rebuilt, obviously. We're gonna pull that off and rebuild it. Put a new kit in it, make sure everything's cleaned out, make sure all the orifices are clean. It would run when I'd hold the throttle at a wide open position back here. It would run and go and just rev way up real nice. Uh, but when you tried to idle, the idle circuit, some of those jets, idle jets things, I'm thinking are pretty clogged up. Uh, who knows how dirty this thing's been and what's been introduced into it and how long it's been sitting. I have no idea. It does have a 2019 sticker on the bow. Uh, I think that got stuck on there with good intentions of getting this on the water. And it never made it. The closest it got was when this guy told me he backed it down into the water to see if he could run and see if it pump water and the outdrive would work. And uh, he said two, two and a half minutes of running maybe. Boy, if he got it running that long, I'd be surprised because there's a lot of things that weren't quite right on it. And thank goodness he didn't run that out drive very long because it had maybe 10 tablespoons of gear oil in it that I drained out. I filled it up. He told me he tried to fill it through the upper hole. I told him, I said, you can't do that. <laughs> I said, you won't get enough oil in this, in, in this unit and you'll cook it. So fortunately, he never ran it long enough to, to do any damage, I don't feel. Uh, I ran it with it in gear the whole time last video and no weird noises are coming out of it. So I think we got ourselves a, another good spare out drive, which is awesome. Uh, what else? Let's get this carburetor ripped off here and, uh, we'll go from there. We'll go inside and I got to order a, a kit for it and we'll go from there. Basically you just got to take... I'm gonna take this bolt off so this whole linkage will come off with it instead of trying to pull that pin out. It doesn't hurt to leave it all together. It's not gonna hurt anything for me right now. And then we'll take this heater, heat riser tube loose, fuel line. Man, I just put that on my hand a little while ago. Ooh. Fuel line off. And then uh, four bolts on top here. And this thing will have uh, an exit strategy. Uh, 
There we go. Woo! That looks a little rough underneath there. All right, carburetor removed. Now, if this is your first time taking a carburetor apart, I suggest you take a lot of pictures. You know, don't be afraid to get a couple shots of how some of the stuff went together, like how some of the linkages function. Once you have all your pictures taken, then you can start taking some linkages off and different things like that. I'm going to go ahead and pull this cutter pin. Oh, we got gas flowing everywhere. Now, one of the important part is to take pictures of these linkages so you know exactly how that went back together again. Because you don't want to mess this up. Now, the one that's going to be really easy to take off is this guy right here. If you just pull that one off. What this one will allow you to do is get that linkage out from behind here. You flip it up and you take it completely off. This will let you lift the top part of the carburetor off. Now you've got another. Looks like we need to take this in order to get this linkage freed. It looks like it's kind of swaged in there. I want to take a screwdriver and back that off. Now this is one you don't want to lose, that's for sure, because it does have a shoulder on it. And it's just a little, little rusty, corroded, grease, stiff old grease on it and all that fun stuff. We'll go ahead and uh, wire wheel that up before we put it back together. We'll set that over here. And then this should pretty much separate the bottom from the top. Now, we're going to go ahead and take the automatic choke mechanism loose. And when we put this back together, I'll show you how we adjust it. Okay, I'll show you how I adjust it. Good thing is nobody's really screwed this one up. It's a lot of times people have a screwdriver in here and they're trying to turn it. And they'll do that without backing off these screws completely. And they end up breaking this out. There's also a proper way to put these on. If you look at these things, they're curled. They got little fingers that come down. Those fingers go toward this black piece. So as you can see here, there's a lot of there's a bimetal spring in here. You want to be very gentle with that. That actually hooks onto this right here. And when you're putting this on here, you'll put that together, and this will fit better than it does now. But watch when I turn this. See how that butterfly is starting to go closed? And right there, if you don't have enough tension on it, see what it does? It'll flop open. Just enough tension will allow that to flop shut. And then once it starts to warm up, the bimetal spring grows and it does one of these numbers and lets your butterfly go straight open. That's how that works. And that's how we'll adjust it when we put it back together. You want to be very gentle on this. You don't have to get carried away with cleaning it. A little carb cleaner. It's only a little dusty. The exhaust actually rises up through here. Through this little plate here. Let's heat come into here. And this is the this is the deflect the heat coming straight up the riser pipe. So that's a key piece. There are two Phillips head screws down in here. We can take those off. Here again, folks, I can't stress enough to use good quality screwdrivers so you don't strip things out. Some people like automatic or manual chokes on things, the old, the old school stuff. You know, this is, this is the next level thing. To, you know, automatic choke here was a pretty cool thing. Oops. Yeah, you gotta take this screw off here too. That little screw was stubborn, but it came right out once I got a screwdriver that fit down the bottom nice. This has got a little key on it. You got the little screw in the middle of the shaft. It's got a little piston in there. Isn't that cute? Now we can pull my Phillips screws back out of here. 
It's these two right in here. And you wouldn't necessarily have to take this off, but it's just nice to, I like to get everything cleaned up, put back together fresh. New, ga new gasket behind this one. As you can see, this gasket's pretty brittle. Let's go ahead and disassemble the top. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Phillips screws on here. These are a little crusty. Once we've got all the Phillips screws out of the top here, we should be able to separate this. Shouldn't be anything holding it together but just tired old gasket. That's good. The float seems pretty good. Man, that accelerator pump is working well and it actually looks really nice. There's a spring down in here on the other side of that accelerator pump. We'll pull that out. Yep, there's a lot of sediment down in here. A lot of dirtiness going on in there. We can also take these out. Be mindful of where you see gaskets. There's a little gasket on that screw right there. And these look kind of dirty around here. They're pretty, they're pretty skunked out. Should be able to pop this loose. Maybe. Oh yeah. Those are nasty. You can guarantee these two little jokers are probably plugged up tight. It's another little springy of Flanders down in here. Maybe that don't come out so easy. Little T piece there. Was right down trying to spill the gas. I'll come back in after I get rid of the gas and I'll show you. A little tiny old spring here. My guess is there's a ball underneath there. Yep. A little tiny ball. A little, looks like it's almost brass even. There's a little T-slot right there, a little, I wouldn't even call it a T-slot. But right down there, this goes right down in here. And it pushed in kind of snug and then it's trapped and that little spring and that ball were behind it. All right. Now you can see how dirty it is down in here. That's pretty filthy. Yeah, this is generally just just a filthy. Now we can go ahead and take these Phillips screws off the bottom. Now what I'm trying to do is be very gentle with the gaskets. And it's not that I'm going to reuse them. Yeah, those are... It's because I want to be able to compare them to pictures online. And the reason I want to be able to do that is because sometimes the descriptions are inaccurate and you can actually find in pictures what you're supposed to have better than finding things for certain years. That's what I've been, that's been my uh, experience. And underneath the gasket there's your third screw. So there's one, two, three, 
I take this base off. The other gasket you want to have a, be able to take a look at is this guy right here. And if you're lucky and it comes off in one piece, that means you don't have a lot of gasket scraping to do. I'm going to take a picture to look at how that looks. We'll pull this pin out of here. That's your float pin. Your float and your needle should come out there. Shake your float. If you don't hear anything, chances are it's uh, in good shape. I wouldn't be afraid to reuse that one. go so the gasket kit you're looking for will look have these two gaskets in it for sure and then you'll find an accelerator pump uh, maybe a couple of little fine gaskets maybe a new spring a new ball uh, there's just some different things you might find might see a new uh, seat in here in your kit the seat with a gasket there for your float seat that's pretty much tore all the way down as far as you need to go other than you can pull this screw off and pull this shaft out on the side here if you want. It's up to you. Um, you definitely want to get this out of, out of here before you soak it in any kind of carb cleaner. Nice thing is it can't go in the other way. It can only go in one way for you. I'll go ahead and put this little clippy back on here just so I don't lose it. Just like that. There's another gasket you'll be looking for. It's right underneath here. And this should all come in a kit, but like I said, you want to you want to have this as a visual reference when you're looking for your kit. I can save this one, it'll be an absolute miracle. Well, it's coming. I find a utility knife, it's kind of handy to kind of get in there. Now you guys might think, wow, he's got a lot of patience, but it pays off in the long run. I've got a lot less gasket scraping to do on this. But see, I'm, I look at that kit to make sure it's got a gasket like that. So now we got three major gasket styles we're looking for here. Along with that accelerator pump should come in the kit as well. Let's see if these screws will back out. Oh, no problem there. When I see a little rust, it kind of concerns me sometimes to see if it'll actually let go. This will look brand new or close to brand new when I put it back together. We'll have it all sparkly pretty. This is the screw that will get you if you don't get that gasket off there because you won't see it. You'll be prying that thing apart and you'll actually just destroy your carburetor. There we go. That should be the only two. You can go right here and just give it a little bit of a twist. See not much there. There you go. Now here's, you're going to back these out too. I will check and see where they're at. I have, this is your mixture screws. And uh, I have a feeling they may be off a little bit or just completely plugged. Now this gasket is going to be a little different because it doesn't even use this one out here and this one out here it looks like. So let's see if I can get this one off. Oh yeah. The greatest of ease. There we go. Now we've removed all the gaskets from the carburetor. I'm going to take these all in with me while I do some research and find the carburetor gasket kit, rebuild kit for this Rochester 2 jet. 
Right there it says GM Rochester 2 Jet. Made in USA. This was a this is a 1973. That's what it come off of. So let's go see what we can find. All right, folks, we're ready to start putting this carburetor back together. And uh, I've got a Sierra Marine carburetor kit here. And to have a Napa carburetor kit here for the same carburetor. I actually, right off the bat, I see something pretty cool about the, what's in here? Nothing? So for installation instructions, visit the cstarsolutions.com. And then for the Napa one, comes with a nice big, okay, it's not big, instruction sheet that describes all the parts and pieces in detail. Now, I'm going to tell you right out of the gate here, the Napa one cost about twice as much. It was like 46 maybe. I think it was like 46 bucks for the Napa one and about 26 I'll link, I have the links for both of these down below in the description you can look them up and verify the price I'm going off of a little bit of memory here they both come in nice little packages and so everything stays together not lost I'm just gonna open these up and we're gonna take a look I have a couple of carburetors to rebuild here and I just want to see the difference in the gasket maybe the gasket quality between the two or maybe they're both exactly the same like both of them say breaking this seal prohibits the return and or crediting it of this carburetor kit yep totally committed now now what I do have here, let's see if I can get this a little more space here. Now I flipped them around. This is the nap one. Oh wait, wait! I spoke too soon. I spoke much too soon. Hey, hey! Look at here. They both. Have an instruction sheet. They both look exactly alike. So this, uh, these two kits obviously come from the exact same manufacturer. Otherwise, the instructions would be a little different for one another, maybe. They're both printed in the same location in USA, 1982 Techlit Company. So, so far they're apples for apples, just some different packaging. Napa's got their packaging and uh, Sierra has theirs. So let's just pull up, this is some of the small pieces. Let's pull up this big base gasket here and see how they look compared to one another. And I'm just doing this, you know, I'm not trying to kill time, guys. I just want to see, I'm looking at, like, the quality of the kit. Those materials are exactly the same. No different. And I spent the different money so I could kind of give you guys an idea of the what you may or may not get with the quality of parts. Oh, Okay. Now you got two of these style of gaskets here in each kit, I believe. Yep. And they look exactly alike. They're the exact same part number I ordered, just from two different people, two different companies, two different things, right? Here's this guy. Looks like a perfect match, except for my old one has a square here, and this one has a little cutout like that. Same way here. So that'll work. So we're two for two for good gaskets we can use, right? Let's take, what the heck? No way, is this the same? Well, 
Well, now this lines up perfectly here. It wouldn't appear that my carburetor didn't use this other up here. You can see the lines there. That's why I like to keep the old gaskets. You can see what it was actually using. And this lines up once I flip it back around the way I had it. I had it right. There we go. This lines up perfectly with that gasket, so that's a good one. What about this guy? This one came with two of them. Once. What is that made out of? That is some kind of thick. But it is much different. But it did come with this one, which matches this one to a T. So we got good gaskets there. Good. Yeah, you can see this one. Let's see here. Let's get this right. Yeah, there we go. Now we're matched up. So now we're three for three. The other gasket, main gasket we needed was this guy. Let's see what we got here. So in conclusion, both kits are absolutely identical and look like perfect matches for rebuilding this carburetor. So we're going to go ahead and use the Sierra Marine on this one since they're both identical. Even the, I mean they are identical in every way. Now one big difference I see here Hang on, hold the phone. Now we're starting to see some differences here. The Napa one came with the uh, accelerator pump spring assembled. Has all the little springy things and this one's missing stuff. Now my guess is they're counting on you to possibly reuse the spring off your existing one, which is a possibility. Let's see what I got here. Where are you, accelerator pump? There it is. Another big difference. Difference in length. The Napa one appears to be the right length. This one is shorter. Isn't that strange? So the Sierra kit doesn't match. The Napa kit does. Napa comes with another spring that goes down underneath here. So you don't have to reuse that. Looks like it comes with a float needle and seat and gaskets for that. So does the Sierra one. So the Sierra one could be used, but I have no idea how these come apart and how you would you could install the spring on here, but that shaft isn't going to line up and do what it's supposed to do. It's too short. So, we're going to use the Napa kit. And I'm going to hang on to this kit because I'll guarantee you I'll find a carburetor. I'll run across one that has a shorter throw on the accelerator pump. So Napa wins. I'm glad I spent the extra money on this one. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to completely put this carburetor back together. First thing we're going to do is install the, the main metering jet. They're right down in here. There are two little brass jets. I took them out when I cleaned everything up. We're going to screw them both back in. I've already got one in. Make sure those are bottomed out and tight. Once those are in, I put these in a little baggie all by themselves. There's a little ball, a little ball that is called the pump discharge ball. 
and it goes I'll show you Ugh. I don't want to lose any of this stuff let's see if I can carefully put it in a little pile here maybe a little ball is the one I'm worried about now what we have there's it's called the um, pump inlet check ball or actually pump discharge ball it goes right in here whoa and there's this little tiny spring here and a little ball this is the ball this is the retaining clip there's a brand new ball came with it first thing we're going to do is drop that little ball right down this one that has a little t-slot looking thing right across it let me see if i can zoom in and see this so right here there's a little tiny t there this is a little tiny t piece hard to see what this does you drop that ball down in there and this little spring goes in there and then this little T piece goes right inside the spring and then you push it down and it should have like a little bit of a press fit That pushes in pretty firmly, and you want to make sure it's sitting flush. Now the other big gasket you're going to have here, let's see, let's, we're going to use that little gasket next. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Right here. That fits right here. Lines up just like that. You're going to put your venturis with your metering meters on them right down in here that's all right down in there looks like that sorry i didn't have you in the shot there so we're going to now we're on the top part we're going to install a new seat the float seat make sure you got a screwdriver big enough to span it so you don't mess it up and snug it down in there against the gasket now this has a thick gasket and it came with a thin gasket I matched it up with the old one that had the thin gasket so we'll set that gasket aside next order of business is put the float back in I'm going to be using the float because the float seemed to be in really good shape and then we're going to use a new needle even though the old needle seemed to be in, needle and seat seemed to be in pretty good shape it comes with two, type, two different types of needle seat little retainers. I'm matching this one up with the one that was in it. And then we'll slide that right back in through the slot. There's a slot right here on top of the float. That'll hang in there just like that. We'll drop it in and reinstall our pin. The pen floats in there back and forth pretty easily, but when you put the other part of the carburetor on it, it's trapped. It can't go anywhere. And as you can see, this one's, when it's closed, whoops. As you see here, when it's closed, this looks basically parallel with this surface. You can follow your adjustments in your paperwork and all that fun stuff. They actually give you a little measuring device like this so you can actually check your float and it'll tell you you know where it should be from here to fully open there'll be a range so make sure you follow your work instructions when it comes to measuring that i would tell you what it is but they can vary from carburetor to carburetor and if somebody was to watch this video and go oh i adjusted mine and it doesn't work well your carburetor could have been a little different different year different something or another that's why i'm not going to disclose that information but i do know that generally you're looking for that to be sitting parallel to this surface and then it then it floats when it opens up it's this way 
because this is in, in operational mode, this is how it sits. And then the fuel comes in, boom, shuts the fuel off. You consume fuel, it goes in and lets fuel come in. Just that easy peasy. Next thing I'm going to do is get my accelerator pump installed. So that's pretty easy to do. This one's already there, all assembled. All I got to do is put my little circlip back on here. You can't see this, can you? Right there. So this little arm right here, it can only go in one way because it's, you can slide it in that way, but it's just, and that wouldn't be in the center of this opening. Basically this center of this opening here is where you want it to be. So you slide it in this, in from this direction, you can see this is more or less in the center of that pocket. So we'll go ahead and put our little clip, retaining clip back in, and use one of these little guys right here. We're just going to pop that on. Accelerator pump. Now they call it, I call it accelerator pump. Just looking here, pump inlet screen, pump leaks. They just call it a pump. I call it accelerator pump because when you give it the when you give her the onions, it goes and squirts a bunch of raw fuel down the throat of this thing, and gives it the power to launch without having a dead spot. Okay, now that all this is installed, we can kind of go, kind of start uh, getting our gasket. What did I done do? You know what? I should have put the old uh, float in, the gasket on before I put the float in, huh? Because that's got to go like right there. So let's just go ahead and pull the float back out. There is a little locating pin right here on this side. So that, so that gasket's just perfect. Right there. Now we'll put our float back in. All right. Now looking at the other old gasket, that's how it sat in there. You can see all the, where everything fit through. As you can see, that square being different shaped isn't going to hurt anything. There's a hole here, but it wasn't doing anything. It was just over this whole opening underneath it, so we should be okay there. It's not sealing off around it. I was looking at this hole up here. It was just a hole in this one as well. It has a slot underneath it and nothing on this side, so we should be good there. That's why I like to hang on. If you can get the old gaskets off without destroying them, it's actually pretty cool. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to do this because I'm just a little nutty that way. I'm going to put a little, around this little seal, I'm going to put a little two-stroke oil. And some of you might say, why not just put regular oil? I'm like, well, two-stroke oil is designed to work with gas, and it will be just absorbed right into the system. No problem, right? Okay. The other spring that's in this system that you got to make sure you put back in is this little spring goes right in here. And that's that's on the opposite side of this guy. So when you accelerate your pump down, the spring is letting it return. And it looks like this came with a new spring. Where did I see it? The old spring still works. I'm going to keep the old spring because it matches size and size size for size and all that fun stuff. So we're going to stand that right up in there. Now all this should go back together. We'll get that spring lined up. I'm just kind of eyeballing this a little bit to make sure my gasket's getting situated properly. You 
Yeah, one screw that's longer than the others, it goes right here. The rest of them are all the same length. Now what I'm listening for here is make sure that float is moving in there smoothly before I tighten everything down. Now this accelerator pump piece went right in here. Linkage. It hangs down just like that. And that'll connect to a, a piece down here. So when the throttle is activated, it's closed, it's activated, it goes up. When it comes up, it goes, psh, squirt some gas in there. I think I'm pretty happy with what I see so far. I'm going to go ahead and finish tightening these screws down. Okay. Now the bottom gasket doesn't fit this at all. That's because it goes down here. That's the gasket that goes against the manifold. This gasket goes right here. Then you got your three hole pattern here. You got this hole, this hole, and this hole that you bolt things down with. Here's where you want to make sure you get your, when you're putting this back in, you want to make sure you get your one linkage finagled back down in here on your accelerator pump. Back up for a second. I got to get one more piece put on here, which is this guy right here. This goes on right here, like that. And it takes a special screw like this guy that goes in there and holds it in place. I'm going to clean it up. Right, and this guy comes in behind something here. What in the world? Now I've got this gasket underneath here. I got my linkages installed where they, where they belong. This has a little pin that should be in here. It was a crazy little crooked little booger. Once you feel everything's lined up pretty good, you can go ahead and tighten these screws, three screws down underneath here on the bottom. All right, they're good and tight. Now a lot of our linkages are hooked up. As you can see here, this would be your throttle. That's working the accelerator pump. This is your idle adjustment screw here. So we've got the top tightened down with all of its gaskets and hardware in place. Bottom's all tightened up, ready for the this gasket when you go to assemble this and put it back on the outboard. This is where this goes. That's that gasket. They also give you a new there should be a gasket here. That's where your carburetor spark arrestor would sit. Now we're going to go ahead and put the automatic choke. Whoops. Automatic choke back together. Now, inside your automatic choke housing is this little piston. It's a cute little guy. It's got a pin in it. Now when it comes to putting your little choke back in, there's that little piston. It slides back and forth in there and that little arm comes out this way. And then there's a gasket you'll have to use. 
that looks just exactly like this one. And then this will bolt right under here. And then this little flat here Well, doggone me, I let the piston slide back out. And that piston should move move freely in there. And that flat that's on there fits right in that little arm. And you got two Phillips screws. It's like basically I gotta get these Phillips screws in before I can put that in. I'm trying to remember how it went back together as I trying to do things in reverse order. So we got the two Phillips in here with the and we, keep in mind we got the gasket in there. Now we got the piston in there. I got this little black screw that goes right here. So as you can see this little arm in here floats back and forth freely, which activates your choke butterfly. Now that that's all in there, this little plate goes in here. And it's got to go in a position that actually deflects the heat coming in here, kind of lets the heat come around it. And then you can install this guy. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. That other gasket you were wondering what it's for? It's this guy right here. Goes right around this guy right there. Now you want to put this hook so it's on this side. Because as you can see the butterflies close right there. So you want to set this hook so it's on this side of the butterfly. And you just set that down in there. Now what you're going to be doing is your, your choke's going to want to naturally spring open. And you're going to rotate this, and we'll adjust this until, see how that just started to move? And we'll just keep my wide open throttle is preventing me from, you got to have it in wide open throttle position so that everything moves freely. There we go. So now we can bring that up. Oh, I had, silly me had my hand on it. Okay, let's do this again one more time. This time for real. Okay. So we'll bring that up till it just lays shut, just like that. That's how you adjust the choke. Then you can put your little keepers back in it. With that adjusted properly, we can go ahead and snug these down. And keep in mind, this you don't have to get crazy with these. These, these keepers actually got a little springy, a little bit of springiness to it that helps act like kind of a lock washer and a keeper all in one. So just go to their bottomed out and they're, you know, just give them a little bit of nothing there. There we go. I might want a little more than that on it. So now I'm going to back these off to really loose. And if you haven't, if you don't have them loose enough and you try to use this little screwdriver slot and spin this, you'll, you'll break this piece out. I've seen it. I've seen so many broken ones and it's because somebody tried to turn that without backing these off far enough. Last but not least, Are you two air mixture? We got these all cleaned up, spiffy pretty. Now these are backed out two and a half turns. Which seems like a lot to me, but we'll go bottomed out. Half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. You want to have them both adjusted the same. Half, one, one and a half, 
two, two and a half. Now, did you ever get all done and look at the leftover screws and go, what in the actual heck did that go in? Yeah, well, I did that. Add two screws in and miss this one. That's better. Now we'll put this all back on again. Now people talk about rebuilding carburetors and basically all you're really doing is regasketing a carburetor. You're cleaning it up, getting all the debris out of the inside and making it so it all works like it should again. This looks pretty good. It cleaned up real nice. I'd say that looks pretty spiffy. That's going to look good back on top of that old Mer Cruiser. The only other gasket I'll need when I go out there is that guy. We'll make sure we take that out when we go back out there to install it. Other than that, that turned out really nice. Well, now that we're closer to getting this engine running, I need to address the wheel situation on here. Now this boat's never going to make it to the water. Let's just be honest with ourselves. The boat's junk. And the wheels and axles, the wheels are not great. The axle and trailer is actually not a bad little situation altogether. But as you can hear, Bearings are shot. So we're gonna go ahead and see what size axle this is because I may have a donor. I'm not sure why there's a hole in this cap. Did somebody try to make their own bearing buddy? <laughs> and then the Zerk is gone? Looks like I need to get my little uh, enforcer chisel out here and get this knocked off. Awesome, I was hoping it was. This were to be, appear to be a straight one inch axle. And yeah, these bearings have got rust and damage all over them. But one inch is very common size. I'm pretty sure it's one inch. I hope maybe it's an inch and a sixteenth. We'll find out. This hub is all right. Let's see what we can doctor up on this side. All right, we'll go ahead and remove our paper tiles we had keeping rodents and varmints out. And we'll set a carburetor gasket and a carburetor in its place. Now make sure you don't drop one of these nuts down the intake manifold. Get to keep a good grip on them. Now that we have the carburetor firmly tied down, I noticed that this choke doesn't really want to flop shut with as much pressure as I'd like to see it. So I'm going to back off those three um, screws I was telling you about. Let's see if we can get her close up just a little bit more. There she is. She's nice and shut right there. We're going to call that good. Because once that spring warms up, she's going to open right up once the temperature comes up. All right. Which, as you can see, I had the valve cover already loose. And it made that a whole lot easier to play with. We're going to go ahead and stick the fuel line back on it. 
And we're dangerously close to firing this thing up, I think. I think we can put some fuel back in here, put the battery in, and we give it a shot. As you see, I got my new ends on my battery terminals. So I'm gonna hook my positive back up to the starter here. And if this thing doesn't turn over like I want it to, I'm gonna have to just take a little wire brush to all these little terminal connections. But now that I've disturbed everything, I think it's gonna try to probably work a lot better than it did. We'll see. Won't take long to clean them all up if that's what I need to do. But for this experiment, I just wanna get it running, running well, so I can pull this motor out of the boat. Positives connected to the engine, negatives connected to the engine on the ground. And uh, pretty sure I topped off the oil. Yep, she's full of some nice good old 30 weight Napa. That stuff right there is what I got in it. Also, I've got the plugs. That was leaking all the water. I've got two new plugs to stick in here to keep water from running all over the inside of the boat and it can circulate throughout the engine properly. Now when you're putting these little petcocks back in, the one on the exhaust manifold or intake slash exhaust manifold is an eighth inch pipe. The one that's on the block is a quarter inch NPT thread if you're looking for the right ones to fit. And these are brass that I'm putting in here. And these are nice for winterizing when you can, if you want to drain it real quick, you just open up the little petcock here and empty it right out. remote trigger start is connected and I think I want to have a screwdriver ready to adjust some idle. Alright, fire in the hole. bolts in the valve cover that's why I'm holding it makes a lot of rattling now noise all 
All right, folks, what I'm getting ready to show you is probably the messiest way to adjust the valves, but you're gonna see here that this valve is not spinning like it should. I'll put all the stripes back up if I can. And naturally you shouldn't be able to spin it like this on all of them, but I've got things, I would call it out of adjustment right now for sure, but I'm gonna bring it back in. So no valve cover, engine running. Got my uh, wrench in hand. Got a set a five eight socket on it. Let's fire it up. Okay. In order to adjust it while it's running, and the engine that full temperature, you back it off until you hear it click. Hear that clicking sound? Bring it in until it quits clicking, and then you go into the three quarters of a revolution. But you only go a quarter at a time while it's running. So I can go one quarter. Here I change how it's running. It's letting that, it's letting that lifter bleed out. Then go another quarter. returns to normal again. And I go one more quarter. I'm going for three quarters of return. If you go too fast, you run the risk of running that valve into the piston. So that's number one done. And they're clicking. Now what we're going to be using here is a Felpro gasket, 17900. I'm going to be using this Permatex high tack gasket sealant. This stuff is really awesome. We're going to put us a layer on here. Just paint it on and let it tack up. What this is going to do is hold our gasket in place for us really well while we're setting the valve cover down over the valves. We'll let that tack up for a couple of minutes. Once it's good and tacky, we can go ahead and carefully set this gasket in place. Line up all your holes, stick it down. And that's going to hold your gasket in place really well while you're setting this valve cover back down. Now this valve cover gasket has four holes in it, but we're, this engine only utilizes three of them. This is just blank, but this is not going to hurt anything. It's fine where it's at. All right. We're ready to put that back All in right, the boat. We're going to go ahead and slip this valve cover back in place now. Okay, with the timing set, valves adjusted, cicadas are in high gear right now. You can hear those things in the background. It's running pretty darn good.
little bit of carburetor adjustment I can do to get rid of that little bit of a dead spot that's there. But I'm going to call this engine salvageable. Next time you see this engine, we'll be lifting it out of this boat. And this boat will be going to a dump. So, the goodness that's left in this boat is what you hear right now. Well, we got the valves adjusted, put new plugs in it, we rebuilt the carburetor. What else do we do? Obviously adjusted the timing. It's all back together. It's all back together now and ready to be pulled. Okay, don't be afraid to leave some comments down below what you thought of the messiest way in the world to adjust valves. That's where I found out that uh, you can do it. When you turn them by hand, you gotta bring each valve around to a you know. Bottom dead, top dead, bottom dead, top dead for intake exhaust, intake exhaust. That's one way you can do it. It takes time to do it that way. But I have the valve cover off anyway. And the other nice thing about it is since I wasn't worried about the interior of this boat, once I put the valve cover back on, I took a whole can of brake cleaner and just hosed down that engine. Just rinsed all that oil right off the engine. Now it's pick and span again. So, pick your poison, whichever way you want to do it. I've done it the other way. I just did it this way for the first time ever. Shut it off and hit start one more time. Just listen to how quick it pops off. You guys still here? I think I'll do a cold start in the morning. Add that to this video. Well, there it is, folks. If it ain't broke, fix it till it is. I'll see you on the next video. All right, it's the next morning. We got the water on. Alrighty, let's climb in here and see if this thing will fire. Now I'm going to give the throttle one pump. Yep. The choke just slammed shut. I saw it over here. Um, not out of fuel on this thing. Let's see if she'll run. See how she starts with a cold start. Come on, baby. Wow. Fired right up, cold start. This bad boy is right as right gets. I have to give her a little throttle here.
manually opened up the choke there. It was working fine. Alright, I just unhooked the fuel line from the gas tank. I'm going to run the carburetor dry. I'm going to go ahead and shift it into gear, see what it does. She's warmed up now. Just ran out of fuel. Thank you, Mr. Battery. Your services are no longer needed on this boat. All right. Next time you see this particular motor, she'll be on an engine lift. All right, there you have it, folks. Cold start. This baby is right as right gets. Uh, yeah, I can play around with the carburetor just a tickle more. I could play around with the timing a degree, plus or minus a little bit more. But for the purposes of getting this engine running and seeing how she sounds, making a few adjustments, she's ready for the engine stand. And one of these days I'll find me a boat that's in really good condition that has a really bad motor. Somebody actually took out a motor. I've yet to find an Iron Duke that was toast that wasn't due to freezing. Usually what takes these out, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Usually what takes these out is improper winterization. And you'll crack a block and crack it and you'll destroy the block. Unfortunately, that happens. I ran into one of those so far. And it's sad when that happens. Because it's so, so preventable. These things can seem to take a lot of neglect and abuse. But they can't take when the block freezes and cracks it. Alrighty, well... In the first part of the video, I spared you guys the uh, cleaning of the carburetor. I showed you the taking it apart and putting it back together. If you want to hang in here for a little while longer, I'm going to add footage to the end of this. I know this video is crazy long already, but I mean, if you're sitting on a Sunday morning or Monday morning or whatever day you don't work and it's your relaxing day, just pop it on there, watch it, fall asleep if you have to. That's okay. Let the music play. And, uh, I'm going to add that, that footage to the end of this video if you want to watch how it comes apart and what I use to clean the carburetor up with. And then you can also follow on a sneak peek of some more drone footage of an up-and-coming boat that's going to be airing real soon. Um, it's a boat that I'm pretty proud to own, and uh, it's, neat. it's a neat one. And I'll give you a hint. It's 50 years old, and it's still in the water as you'll see in the drone footage and still performing like it should. 
there's a few things there's a, a three-part series so far i put together with it i've only had the boat a week uh not even a week i bought it earlier this week and uh but lots of fun to be had and lots of lots of things to do on that boat that uh, are going to bring it right back to you know just being a top dog in its field all right thank you thanks again guys enjoy the rest of the video all righty we're back in the shop the other day I took this carburetor apart and don't lose that little ball man that thing could roll off be gone forever matter of fact I'm gonna take advantage of one of these little ziplock bags and I'm gonna put those three little items in this bag that go together yep that's what I need to do I lose that ball things come to a screeching halt all right I picked up some of this Berryman Kim Dip carburetor parts cleaner cleans all carburetor parts without heat aeration or or agitation I like a product that doesn't cause agitation we're gonna get right after open this up gently so it'll reseal later on down to what the heck is on my finger go I picked this up at you probably guessed it my local Napa store they had a Napa brand parts cleaner but this was an actual carburetor cleaner and it does come with the little basket there we go so she's fresh and clean brand new stuff let's just take a quick look at this no plastic parts in here all just dirty carburetor we're gonna just dunk it and I got the basket in here just to help bring it back to the cert oh no get that in the right direction here there we go it's got the basket here to help me to help me not drop it in there almost completely submerged almost looks like I got room for this guy yep yep that submerses what else we got room for I'm not gonna do the screws we can do this guy though this is the choke let's see if that'll submerge oh yeah we can get that completely under nice a float some other pieces we can do this little guy boink float I'm not gonna worry about the needle seat not gonna worry about it's pretty clean let's just let that soak overnight we'll see how it looks before we dunk the rest of it in this piece here let's just slide this aside for a minute this piece here I'm gonna still moves pretty nice but I'm gonna wire wheel a lot of this heavy rust off or maybe we'll just soak it too what do you think about that let's soak it let's see what it does I want to see how clean it gets one thing I want to do is check this screws now what I what I mean by check them I'm gonna take and see how far out they are or in so i'm gonna turn them in until they stop there's a half there's a one one and a half two almost two and a half that seems like a lot to me what about this one let's see it started out right there half one one and a half two two and a half yeah about the same a little over two and a half on each one 
I'll do some research and see how far these are supposed to be for a starting point. Yeah, they look a little... We need to soak those for sure. Let's just put them in the old dip tank. Bloop, bloop. And then we'll soak these two things later when the hot tub for carburetor parts is less full. Well, I was going to let this soak overnight, but from what I can see, so this thing, let's see, it just says Berryman Chem Dip Carburetor Parts Cleaner is a highly effective carburetor parts and throttle body cleaner that removes gum, varnish, fuel residue, and other deposits from carburetor parts and throttle bodies in 15 to 30 minutes without heat, aeration, or agitation, safe for use on with most plastic and metal, car, metal carburetor parts and throttle bodies, including steel, aluminum, and their alloys. Limit soak times of coated and sensitive aluminum finishes. 1973, there wasn't anything known as a sensitive aluminum finish, so I think we'll be okay. For a maximum of four hours. Huh. Looks like you can rinse it with water. Says to, to clean considerable buildup, allow, allow longer soak time to remove extremely heavy carbon, allow to soak overnight, rinse with water, and clean with a wire brush if necessary. So we're going to let this go overnight. We'll rinse the parts off in the morning, and we'll look at them. So we're just doing overnight, not even 24 hours, doing overnight. It's like 9 p.m. right now. We'll let that big dog eat. This wasn't cheap. This is like $44, something like that. But I can clean a lot of carburetors with it. And I've always got some nasty stuff to clean up. So that works good for that. We'll be back in the morning. Let's take a quick look at what came out after soaking. It doesn't look too bad. It got all the, I, I rinsed them all, I rinsed off all these parts that I had in there. You might have some blacking going on here and there, but I feel relatively confident it dissolved what's in there. Anything that was in these little passages, I'm pretty confident it dissolved it. We'll make sure air, air passes through those. But if you're expecting it to come out bright, shiny, and looking brand new, don't. Because it won't do that. But it did soften up some gasket material. The little needles, you know, still have a little bit of, you know, just whatever rust. It kind of like neutralizes any rust or any kind of corrosion that may be happening there. But the ends look pretty clean. I'll go after it with a little bit of wire wheel now and make them look a little bit better. But then now we're going to soak these other two pieces I have remaining. And I'm waiting for my gasket kit to show up and we can get the rest of it. We can actually reassemble this thing and I'll walk you through that step by step. Now some, for some of these smaller pieces, I've got a really soft wire wheel here. And I, I take these and I just gently hit them. Just to kind of clean up anything in the thread, just to get rid of any. Especially on this little needle area, be very gentle with that. You can kind of work your way around that and you can see it just brings a the shine back without leaving any marks on it. You don't want to bury this thing into the wheel. Like this here, you can see how that's kind of looks kind of gnarly. It's not going to bring it back to new, but at least to get rid of any of that build up oxidation or any kind of other little surface stuff going on. It looks a lot better. It's going to reassemble a lot better too. Might as well start off looking as good as it can look. So that's what I'll do for all the little screws and stuff to reassemble this to make sure they're all clean and nice. Tell you what, that Berryman's actually did a really good job. This thing here was kind of heavily rusted in here. And when I opened it up after soaking overnight, or actually this was soaked all day, most of that rust was neutralized and turned black. And then it came out of there pretty easily. Same way with these parts. They all come out pretty good, pretty clean. 
I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now, they didn't come out this shiny, folks. I'm gonna tell you that right out of the gate. Uh, I got after this with my little soft wire wheel. And then this little wire wheel guy right here can be your friend in a Dremel. I got after some of the crook, cracks and crevices and just kind of cleaned up highlights and whatnot. All my gasketed surfaces are in really good shape now. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I'm gonna try to get you up here close with this camera. There's little lines you'll see around all these little openings. All around here. Now some people might have the, the urge to take a file to this and clean it all off flat. Well, that little ridge that's all the way around all these areas is des designed to bite into the gasket. So don't get crazy. That's why on this surface here, I just used my little soft wire wheel and kind of went around and just make sure it was all nice and clean. But we got all of our screws cleaned up. This is our, this turned out nice. Look at that sucker. That's the choke housing. This thing's gonna look pretty neat when it's all back together. Little needles cleaned up well. This little guy, this is part of the automatic choke assembly. That cleaned up real nice. So I'm pretty pleased with the Berrymans. I, I was kind of, you know, wondering if this day and age, they still made a good carb cleaner that really had some, you know, chemicals in it that would do something. Now this had a lot of black paint on it and it stripped that black paint clean off of it. So it will do that. Anyway, while we're waiting on gaskets, we're gonna get started playing around with some wiring. Now, in the previous video, you might have saw me tapping on the starter, thinking I had a hanging up starter and whatnot, but actually I'm pretty sure what I had was just bad connections. Look at the green. You know, this type of connection is a great temporary connection, but don't make it permanent. It's not a good permanent connection. I'm gonna cut it back and see how much this, uh, you know, oxidation comes back. I've got these, these wires are plenty long. So I'm gonna take my old cutters here and see, just, I'm just gonna cut it back and see what kind of, oh, that's gonna be hard to cut. There we go. I bought one of these crimpers. These are some heavy duty crimpers that came with, and there'll be a link in the description below for this stuff if you want it. I bought this before I even got this boat. Now let's just dump some of this stuff out here. Let's just get it out in front of us. Let's just make a big old mess. So this kit came with, let go. This kit came with a bunch of different size lugs. I shouldn't say a bunch, but enough different size lugs that'll probably take care of most of your battery terminal needs. So we cut this off the end here. Now I'll melt that down and turn it into a bullet. But we don't need to strip a whole lot back, just back to here. Let's just go ahead and get this off of here and see what one fits. Now I haven't used this crimper yet. This is the first time. So I'm kind of excited to try it out. And the reason I'm putting this kind of lug on it, the battery I'm, I'm using right now has the wing nuts. You know, it has the little studs where you can use wing nuts. So I'm gonna take advantage of that. And this wiring back here looks, looks pretty healthy. I think we cut it back far enough that we got rid of that oxidation. Like I said, I'm pretty sure most of my starter issues started with a bad connection. So let's just give this a whirl. Now they gave you the same size heat shrink for all the different size lugs, which kind of surprises me. Let's see what we got here. We got one that fits it. See that fits it really tight and really close. There's no way that'll crimp down that tiny. Really? Nuh uh. I'm gonna start off bigger and work my way down, I think. Let's try 16 here. I don't know. Let's just put it in here and crimp it down and see what happens. Tell you what, that just bit right down on there hard. That ain't going nowhere. Now we get the old heat shrink and see how, let's see how pretty we can make this.
This stuff must shrink a lot. This has got that oozy juice that comes out and seals it up. Now that's a proper terminal right there, folks. I ain't kidding. Uh, let's get the other end of this joker. Let's do the same thing. Because you can see this is busted right here. I don't know how good this connection is in here anymore. One thing I do know is when I cut it off and put a new piece on, or new connection, I know that thing is solid. Nice thing about these, they're so big if you get to put them on, you can put them on after the fact. I kind of like that because that happens to me more often than I'd like to admit. I'm going to try a little bit bigger one this time, a bigger crimp because that one seemed to pinch down pretty good. That crimped down pretty good. I wouldn't be up. Just seems like I could go a little tighter. Now the other tool that can be your friend, not just on your carburetor, but on your wiring on your boat is the same little wire wheel. Something like this. Get you a handful of these. Get you a handful that goes straight out. What we're going to do now is, obviously we're going to clean the connection points of where this wiring goes, but we're also going to take every single connection on the boat one by one and take it loose, clean it up, clean the eyelets up, and put it back together. That way you eliminate all possible chances of a wire fire because you have good solid connections. And here in this situation, this here is one of those Chicago electrics from Hobo Freight. And I say Hobo Freight, I don't mean any disrespect, but it's just fun to say it that way. It's like there's no S in Walsmart. But the other night, the wife and I was walking around the walls, Mark. Get what I'm saying? So, this, you get this whole kit that has a rod that comes out of it, and you run it individually, but it's wireless, cordless. It's wireless, cordless. Um, makes it nice for getting in there and cleaning up stuff all around your engine. So, clean up wiring and wiring connections. So, we're going to do that next. While we're waiting on, we're still waiting on a carburetor gasket kit, waiting on a couple other things to show up so we can put the rest of that engine on back together, so to speak, mainly the carburetor, and we'll fire it up and see if she runs better than she ever did. I'm pretty confident. After what I heard, what you saw in the previous video, I'm pretty confident we're going to bring that bad boy right around to something that runs just beautifully. All right. Well, it's dark outside right now, and I don't want to work by candlelight. I'm going to go do some editing while I wait for parts to show up, and we'll be back in like that. Thank you. 